Hey, friends. Sometimes you're just in the mood for a good old-fashioned black-and-white sci-fi horror movie from the 1950s. Well, I've got one for you this time. Namely, It! The Terror from Beyond Space from 1958. Our story goes like this. In the far-off future of 1973, a second rocket ship has just landed on Mars to investigate the disappearance of the first one. They find only one survivor, Colonel Edward Carruthers. Not Alan Ladd here tells a tale of some kind of alien monster that killed the rest of the crew and wrecked the ship. But no one believes him and he's arrested and will be taken back to Earth to face trial. Now, unknown to the crew, this monster is real and has snuck aboard the rocket. Eventually, it outs itself and goes around killing off crewmen to extract their water, like a, like a water vampire type of thing. The crew tries to fight the monster, but nothing seems to phase it. Not guns, not hand grenades, not poison gas, not atomic radiation, nothing. It only seems adverse to fire. Can the crew save itself and the rocket? Will the monster make murderous mayhem? And what of love? So, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is where Alien came from. Like, really. This is pretty much the same plot as Alien. Only Alien is hella more violent and scary and stuff, because it could be. That was made in 1979, after all. In our cast, we have Marshall Thompson as not Alan Ladd, our hero, Colonel Carruthers. He was in tons of stuff, both movies and TV. Aside from It, which arguably is his most famous role, he also starred in the TV series Doc Tari. We last saw him in my review of 1961's Flight of the Lost Balloon. Shirley Patterson plays Anne, the love interest, and she's got a lot to be interested in. <laughs> she did a lot of westerns and appeared in several sci-fi B-movies, such as World Without End and The Land Unknown. And she was in the original Batman movie serial from 1943. Anne Duran plays Mary, one of the crew. She appeared in Rebel Without a Cause, Topaz, A Summer Place, The FBI Story, just tons of stuff, and went on to guest star in a lot of TV shows right up into the 1980s. She also was in a superhero movie serial, The Green Hornet, from 1940. Richard Benedict plays Bob, a stalwart character actor who was in many TV shows and movies over his career, but probably the most familiar face is that of Dabs Greer, who was in a metric ton of stuff and then went on to play the Reverend Alden in Little House on the Prairie. The monster was played by Ray Crash Corrigan in his final film role. A former athlete and stuntman, he starred in a lot of westerns and the movie serial The Undersea Kingdom. Then he went on to play gorillas in gorilla suits for years and other costume-based roles. Here, Ray was bozing it up a bit and was kind of difficult to work with. He refused to be fitted for the monster mask, so when it came time to put it on, it didn't fit. That meant the costume designer had to improvise. He had to remove the monster's bug eyes, and so we see Ray's eyes instead. And the monster's tongue there? That was really Ray's chin sticking out of the mouth. <laughs> They just painted it to look like the monster's tongue. Anyway, since they kept the monster in the shadows a lot of the time, it all worked. It, the terror from beyond space, shows what can be done on a small budget if you have a good script, a good cast, and a good cinematographer. The shadows, the set designs, all of it is really well done here. They're smart enough to keep the monster mostly hidden, until the later part of the movie, lending it an air of menace. 
This is a tight little picture, and while it only clocks in at 69 minutes, you still feel you get value out of it. Kino Lorber has done right by it with this lovely Blu-ray. There's several commentaries on there, and a really good documentary about the movie, and this here spaceship, which was one of the prototypes for the rocket in George Pal's Destination Moon. Then, after Pal passed on that design, it wound up in several sci-fi B-movies, including two we've talked about before elsewhere on the channel. The Queen of Outer Space, and one of my favorites, Flight to Mars. It, the terror from beyond space, is easily worth three paws up and well worth a watch. Aside from its own merits, you can see where Alien got its start. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.